I think I may have inadvertently started this stream a few minutes early, so bear with me. Definitely time to make a cup of coffee. Uh, is it posted it's saying it was going to start at uh, quarter past? I don't think it ought to start before then. Is just turning up. I uh, inadvertently pressed the wrong button and started the stream a bit early, so I'm waiting for the correct time of quarter past before I do anything. I will be checking my chat though, so if you've arrived early and you want to say anything.
Right, so I guess that's about it. Yeah, I guess that's about it. I've um, set up just to show you the finished plane, uh, show you how I cut the iron out, uh, which you could do if you didn't have an iron, and uh, also uh, demonstrate it a little bit and offer you the chance of getting a template if you want to make one that's the same. So I'm zoomed in at the moment so you can see what I'm doing here on the bench, hopefully. Here's the finished plane. Looks very much like I had it designed. Now we'll go into detail a bit more in a moment, but I'll just demonstrate it here on a piece of pine. So with the grain, works quite nicely. I'm actually going in the opposite direction than you would normally plane here and it's, it's cutting absolutely fine. And I've cut it so much that I've managed to snap both of those tons off now. Um, end grain. With this pine it tends to tend it into, into sawdust rather than take you a nice clean shaving. Probably all the testing I've done is just taking the edge off the, the iron. There is a vaguely an end shaving almost in one piece. So let's take a quick look at the plane. Wooden planes use a tap hammer to set them. So for setting the, the blade depth a bit deeper, we want to hit the body so the body moves um, towards the end of the, the blade, the rear end of the blade. So we tap on this button here. And to retract it, we tap on this little button. As you see, that will push the body in this direction the inertia of the blade means it stays roughly where it is. And the same way to actually get the blade out. At the moment I can't pull that wedge out. Absolutely no hope at all. But by hitting on the, uh, that button there, sufficiently we will loosen that up. Probably won't happen now. Oh, that's good. My little ebony button is now shattered. Who would have thought you couldn't write it, could you? Anyway, I'll get that replaced before the next time. Moving on to the iron. That iron was one I'd already got, came from Clifton, but I was going to show you how to make your own iron, and this is one that I've made. I uh, videoed the process and I will show you that uh, in the edit for the whole build of the plane. And that came from a normal Stanley bench plane iron. Let's see if I can put this together so you can get an idea of what it looked like. That was the iron as one piece. Just check on my monitor, you can't quite see that, can you? That was the iron in, in one piece. I basically ripped it in half to save this for another iron. Then I cut this side off, cut the shoulders in first, cut this end off just by constantly scoring backwards and forwards, keeping it cool with lots of water. Scored the back side. And then eventually I was able to just break that off. And with this side as well, although it was very narrow, I did the same thing, scored it, and eventually snapped it off. Then a bit of cleaning up on the side of the grinder wheel. And then at the bench grinder, sharpened it, 
and cleaned up the shoulders. Now all the time I was doing that I didn't get it so hot as to draw the temper from it. Um, but I will go through a heat treat process on there just to show what you can do if you do get it too hot. Now then, if you would like to make your own version of this plane, the template I use to make it uh, is available to anyone who contacts me today, um, either in the chat box here or through an email to post at womadod.co.uk and I'll put that up in the um, description for this video once we've finished. Now, as, I, as you saw there, the ebony button broke, so that was rather disappointing. But let's see if we can still get the iron out. So I'm going to have to drill that one out and, uh, and make another one. Bit of a shame. Uh, I may go for something that's a bit tougher than ebony. Okay, any questions? Any comments? Show the um, a metal plate doing the same thing. So we're all familiar with metal shoulder planes. There is a huge difference in the weight, and this is as light as a feather. This has really got a lot of heft, and personally, I find these are a lot better in denser hardwoods. Try and start a new rebate with this one. So at my early stage going into using wooden shoulder planes and wooden planes in general really I don't use them that much I find the adjustability of the, the metal ones at the moment um, a lot quicker because I know what I'm doing adjustments on these wooden planes I'm getting used to a bit more there's no um, 
device for doing lateral adjustment on these. It's it's you know purely a case of loosen the iron up a bit, change it a bit, push it from the sides, then tighten it up with the wedge again. But uh, I do like using them. So it's a very comfortable plane to hold. And certainly in this pine it works extremely well. Right, okay folks, no questions. I shall get the videos of this um, all edited and put together into, a, into one single build video. Um, I did take quite a lot of video of the, the build of the plane. Uh, so it should be quite a comprehensive one. And I say if you want to make your own, get in touch and I'll give you uh, the template. So until next time. Cheerio.